Well, this is very much what I lately, you know, with all that's going on, come to them. I admire the holding of the complexity. You know, when we last talked and you told us about what it is to be, um, to do, to write code, and that it was so very different from what I and Rupert had kind of in, like, well, I don't know about Rupert, but I had a kind of a wrong, wrong, wrong headedness about it. And then I noticed that it is really, I think that started me off and with Trump and everything that's going on, I think that is what makes us, that what makes a human, a dharmic human, if you really can hold the complexity and you don't shrink away from it, if you don't always just fear for the easy answer, you know, good, bad, and 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 Rupert, what you wrote, you know, is is a kind of a whole spiel through that, where you say, maybe we, it's not good to just um, see them as negative, but understand them and see see what they are after. And it's but uh, the people who are uh, maybe seduced by populism are seduced by that simplicity. That and it, cause, uh, and, and it has something to do with education and, um, and, and, but not just cognitively, also, I think, upbringing and, and opening the heart to complexity. And how well can you hold that? And when I, when I see people in my job and they, they often, they now more and more often say, you know, love how, how I reframe things. And I was intrigued by that. And I said, well, what is that capacity of reframing? And then I thought, well, I can even put that under that headline of holding complexity. You can reframe things if you see more than that little bit. You see a bigger thing. And in that bigger thing, there is another meaning somewhere, which might be totally opposite to the one that looked totally obvious when you only looked at that little bit. Um, and so maybe that is the aim to, to develop in humankind, but individually, the ability, capacity and willingness to live with complexity. I shot uh, up now. Uh, that sounds good to me. I think I think you're that's a very it's a very uh, concise explanation, and I, I I I agree entirely. I when I was I was thinking about what I'd written, and it occurred to me that I used to be very certain about things, and that I was thinking, well, if I was certain, and I'm not certain now, how how can you be certain? And I remember, I can't remember specific conversations, but I certainly remember being in arguments with people who had very coherent and very well researched points of view, which were different from, from the standpoint that I had. So why didn't I accept their position? And I remember thinking, well, I'm right. And even though I don't understand what they're as much as they do, they're still wrong. And I, so I can now, so from that perspective, I can see why someone who is a, a sort of populist can think, well, I'm right. I can listen to your arguments. I can listen to what you're saying. And even though I don't have the level of research, the level of education that you've got, you're still wrong. If I had your level of education, then I'd be able to prove you wrong, but I don't. But that doesn't make me wrong. So I can see it in myself that how it is possible to be in a position where, from a, a rational perspective, clearly, what you're thinking is incorrect. But I can also see how that person can believe themselves to be right, even though if even though the arguments that are being presented to them would under under other circumstances be sufficient to change their point of view. 
So I think you're absolutely right in what you're saying is that you need to be able to see that the world is much more complex than than the, your stated position, your fixed position, or in this case, my fixed my fixed position. But I'm not sure how you get there. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how you shift from being in a position. I mean, I've i I think I've sort of moved a bit because I I I do. Th- I don't sort of believe in anything now. I mean, I don't. So, but I'm, yeah, I'm not sure other than living a long time and reading a lot and having lots of conversations. I'm not sure what, what, what the, the key is. I think you're right about education. There must be something in education that has to give you an opportunity to be more open and flexible. But other than that, I don't know. I, I'm not sure what we, what strategies there are, other than, because you, in order to become open-minded, you have to sort of have an open mind. Well, I think you, you need to be able to embrace complexity. Yeah. And not all people like to do that. Indeed. So, how do you get yeah, them to so... a position where they where, where they will? I mean, that's the point, isn't it? So... Yeah, yeah. Why, yeah. How is that achieved? Well, you know, well, the thing is, I mean, it, it may be that uh, you know that uh, uh, a good proportion of people, a minority perhaps, uh, who we have to say are po- possibly, quite possibly, not fit for the twenty first century. Um, <laughs> now. <laughs> Say what I, you I, really mean. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I, I'm just thinking, thinking in terms of, you know, if you want to live a, a life today, you've got to be you know, fluent in so many different technologies. It, it's, it's, you know, it can be mind boggling. Even, even for me, you know, a relatively average person. So it, it's just for, for anybody trying to, to you know, of lower intelligence and you know we have to admit there are people of lower intelligence amongst us uh and and they seem to be the ones who are being you know pulled by the nose or or just plain protesting at their treatment um so you know i think looking at this sort of issue in the face and saying that you know we may, may well well assert that you know all humans were created equal that may be a noble assertion, but it's not a truth. We are different. Um, and and uh, the, the may, there's a significant proportion of, of the population who perhaps doesn't quite have the, the smarts of the IQ or the whatever to, to really participate properly in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a world that's just pushing them you know, headlong in, into, into a technological paradigm. People are being left behind, and, and those are the people who are being left behind. Yeah, well, mm, uh, there's a lot of things. In what, <laughs> there's a lot of complexity in what you're saying. Um, yes. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I don't dispute, obviously, that there are different levels of um, what you might, what, what, what we call intellectual capability. I mean, they're... There has to be because there are different levels in for of everything i'm not sure that that relates directly to let's say the way people vote in in elections i'm because i think that education can have a have a big uh, say in how people's what people's approach to questions of or political questions and, and, I, and I think I've sort of become a little bit more interested in this idea of uh, what it is to be human and what this sort of thing I was talking about in that that the piece that I wrote yesterday was really about the nature of being human and what that essential nature is and maybe that's closer to the people who are populist than what we would think of as people with a better education or a better intellect or whatever, or a higher intellect. 
And I, so I, because I think that rationalism is a side effect of evolutionary development, and it, we're using that um, in what we consider to be a very useful way. But if if we think of it as a as a side effect and think of it that it doesn't affect a lot of people or a lot of people are not interested in or not prepared to or not have the capability of using a sort of rational thought then they are more human if you like more human animal more of what it is to be a maybe not more but but they are as this is just the way it could be. This is just, and probably the way it has been for a long time. Mm -hmm. So it's a case of sort of saying, well, there's a side effect to the way that we are, and that's the bit that we ought to be using. And and that's sort of tricky. And it, and it also puts a different perspective on it because it, it, instead of being from the perspective of we know best, it, it sort of says, well, actually, we're we latched on to a side effect that we have, a bit like you now say that we could we could run fast as a side effect of muscle development and leg development. So the people who run fast are are better than those people who can't run fast. And it and it it's not that isn't the case. I mean, there's no better or worse. It's a difference. It just we can we can we can sort of list things that make it appear as though it's better or worse. You know, people are not wearing face masks because they don't think it's sensible. They don't and they, they think it impinges on their freedom, and that has consequences. And you can sort of list the consequences. But I'm not sure that listing the consequences and showing that as evidence is the right way of looking at it. Because that would require the rational approach, which is, as I say, a sort of a side effect and something that has to be learnt and developed and 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 uh, nurtured. One of the um, one of the things about uh, countries like Japan uh, that probably stands out there more than anywhere else is inclusiveness. Um, I don't. I, you, I know you, you've been to Japan. You, uh, I think. You, you, you've sort of seen the culture um, I have. and the way that uh, I haven't. But well, but well, anyway, it seems that every every not, this is not to sort of say that there are sort of pockets of problems, but in the main, there is a, a, an acceptance of, of every single person's role in in society, no matter how menial. Uh, and and you know, people with you know fairly menial tasks in 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 Japan, uh, you know, they take their jobs very seriously and they're treated with uh, respect, even though they're just basically old men doing doorman's job, uh, which, you know, they could probably get a robot to, to replace. Uh, but this is the thing, this is the inclusiveness. There's a place for every single person. Uh, now, despite its you know, imperfections and side effects, um, that that sense of belonging basically says we don't we don't care where you fit on the spectrum. Uh, there's a place for you. So you know this is sort of a, a very very fundamental starting point that many many societies now don't have. There's this common understanding that it, it it's um, it's all of us. It's not just us. You know um, and th this is. And so where you start, when you start from a foundation of inclusiveness, of course, then you've got to talk about the issue of boundaries and, and uh, all that. But, uh, but yeah, and until there is inclusiveness, how can you sort of teach children um, um, down? Well, of course you can in, the, in, in, the lack, in spite of that. But, but I'm just thinking, you know, you need common understandings within a society, you know, social contracts, which basically says we are all in this together, rather than you know saying that there is us and there is them, and that we must defeat them. Uh, this is the you know has become. How does the, the 
how does the political situation work in Japan? Is, is there an us and them? Is there a Republican, Democrat, Conservative, well, Liberal? Well, there's, there's certainly uh, that, that Liberal Conservative divide. Um, you know that that's that's there, but it's, it's a much more. I'm not sure about how it's structured, but the the structure of the parliament there is 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 uh, I think semi at least semi proportional. Uh, so you have a representative parliament, uh, you know, despite it sort of turning into a binary house. Um, but yeah, I, th I think you know there is a sense that you know being Japanese is more than having Japanese citizenship and living in Japan. Mm. And and a, so and affiliation to a political party. Yeah, so that, that you know there there is sort of a a higher level of us, yeah. uh, which, is, which is sort of given primacy. But uh, perhaps a, an example of, a, uh, of, of that going sort of wrong is China. Um, now, Chinese define, and I'm talking here, of course, of, of uh, the mainland Chinese, uh, basically consider that you know, they don't just assert sovereignty over a territory as most states do. Uh, they also assert authority over every single citizen of that country. So no matter where they go or what they do, they are subject to the laws and, and uh, uh, directions of, of, that, of that group. So you know, that's sort of where that feeling of togetherness can be sort of thrown to extremes by totalitarianism. <clears throat> And, and it's the same, you know, whichever way you look at it. Totalitarianism, it doesn't really care what the, what the ideology was to get them there. It, it, you know, totalitarian states are, are, are just that, no matter what, how they describe themselves as, you know, left, right, communist or fascist. It doesn't really matter by the time you become totalitarian. Um, it's hard to tell the difference. So, so you can sort of see that, you know, a sense of, you know, the, the Japanese inclusiveness is, is you know, certainly uh, part racial, part linguistic, part, part territorial, uh, but part, it's, a large part that I see is that there is a social contract which sort of says you know, we are all in this together. We are Japanese. Not, not an assertive nationalistic, you know, we are Japanese, but just that is who we are. And we are in this together. This sort of inclusiveness, uh, but you know, but the, the, in, in China you see that sort of gone dreadfully wrong, um, and you know, where where the state asserts sovereignty over individual people's bodies. But it, it it sort of relates back to something we talked about before, which is this the idea of in politics in proportional representation and coalition government because if you've got that then it seems that you have to have um complexity getting back to what Elfie was saying you have to have an understanding of that there are a variety of different viewpoints whereas if you have the polarization which you have in the states then there is little middle ground you belong to one camp or the other and taking it to the greatest extreme as you're saying in China you only have one you don't even have an opposition which is the worst situation to be so you just have there can only be one perspective and I was interested in looking at the the makeup of the people who voted in the, for Trump from a sort of populist perspective. And there's a, there's a big group, which is somewhere between 25 and 35% of Americans, which is evangelical. And I, I just I just didn't know what it meant. So I, I've been looking it up this morning. I've been reading Wikipedia for what evangelic, what it means to be an evangelical. And, it, and there, it's not the original um, definition of evangelical, which is, to spread the word of Christianity, it's it's there's a sort of American evangelical, and, it, and then there are different um, 
interpretations of that. But a lot of it is to do with being born again, the born again Christian, the idea. And that, and a lot of that is what we would, could, I suppose, call fundamentalism, which is to accept that the, the Bible is literal truth. And that's, that's the sort of code for being. And that is a polarized position. It lacks complexity because it just says this is the way to be. But I'm not, I doubt that all the people who are evangelical, I mean, there's 35% of them, this is your you know, potential, that's a huge percentage of the population. They are not can't all be stupid. You know, they can't all have low IQs. So there, there has to be a sense of um, a, a lack of, as Elfie was saying, a lack of this worldview, a lack of complexity, a lack of being able to see beyond, and a desire for the um, comfort, I suppose, and security of absolute truth, which, which comes from maybe having a political system which is very polarised in it because there are only two sides to it and doesn't have the option of other parties that you can join if you did it, it would be pointless because there is just no room for it within the i mean they i know they say that well, within the democrats there are left-wing democrats and there are moderate democrats and maybe the right-wing democrats or whatever and it's a broad church and maybe it's the same in the republican party but i'm not sure that that can sort of come across when you've got a black and white or a blue and red, um, you, you're in this camp or you're in that camp. And it, it sort of fights against complexity. So maybe there's something within the, the political system, which is a reflection of the culture. So maybe like you're saying in Japan, I, can't, I don't know, but if, if, you know, if there are lots of political parties and they have to have coalitions and they have proportional representation, then maybe that's the way forward. That's the sort of, that's a way of looking at the, how the sort of a more dharmic approach to, to politics is to have not polarized positions in political parties. Maybe the, you know, the whole political system that we have sort of grown up is sort of coming to a uh, the end of its useful life i wonder if it can um that you know there's this thing about you know what is so attractive about being evangelical and it, it clearly doesn't have to do with iq I, I really have to refute that i work with people in, in, in John's work, uh, and they are absolutely, they would swear that I go to hell because I'm not an evangelical person. And they are and I'm highly, you know, there's really nothing wrong with their brains in that way. They're so clever. Um, so it's, it's, it, it cannot be about intelligence. And they are highly educated. And they would still say things like that to to us. They say, you know, we will unfortunately and sadly go to hell um, because we haven't reformed ourselves yet. And uh, that's just how it is. And they say that to, to your face. Um, and so what what is the attraction to an intelligent, well-educated Western European to follow such a creator? And, and I can only just see that some people really look for that exoskeleton. You know, they, they have an orientation towards finding something that tells them who they are. And it has, it's on the outside. And then a religion has always been a perfect um, foil for that. Because they tell you exactly. You, know, you look for the totalitarian approach and you find it in religion and or you might find it in a state if it happens to be uh, going through a phase of totalitarianism so it it's it seems to be are you 
kind of orientated outwards like that and you say okay what is my identity what's around me where can I latch on to and that will do for me and it's not nothing to do with intelligence it's an orientation of a different kind because you know for me to say such things is just stupidity but that's not fair you know clearly they're not stupid but it looks to me like that <laughs> but they would say probably the same for me you know why can you be so stupid and not praise the lord so it's it it's this orientation of finding identity on the outside or of all the people that we meet on our dharma course uh, the orientation of people uh, looking to the inside and uh, what's what's going on there is this dharmic way and noticing that a whole lot is going on there and finding the complexity and 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 easing up the whole idea of identity not being afraid uh, to be someone different every day I wake up and 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 that doesn't cow me because I can say oh well it's one of these days you know um and it's that is the, the willingness and capacity to hold the complexity of my identity, which might change from hour to hour in a certain way and can reach out to other identities and say, I wish you well, mate, you know, I hope Jesus will do it for you. So um, to an extent, because I still think they're stupid. So I mean, <laughs> 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 oh. But Is maybe not... we can just ease up enough about it to even <laughs> value a Trump voter. And I did tell you he might win. Actually, I said he would win. <laughs> I'm very Ross. glad that I was wrong. <laughs> I was right. I was saying when I was right for yes, once. You were. <laughs> Thank God for that. <laughs> and it's actually lost quite badly in the end when by the time they have finished. Maybe. Yeah. But there, there, I can see what you're saying about the exoskeleton, the wanting to have a fixed identity. And is that related, though, to the idea of group, the idea of belonging to a, a group of other evangelicals, the other people who think the same way? And is that really one of the key things that makes that secures the belief that develops and firms up that belief because other people think the same way as you i mean how many individual evangelicals are there you're you're not are you if you're an evangelical then you are part of a group of other people who believe the same things that you do so you have a a sense of belonging and i that's getting back to this idea of what it is to be a human animal, I think, which is a, 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 what we crave is a sense of belonging. It's part of what it is that makes us human. And that's happened over hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years. And that's the way we have been. And it's only very recently that we've come into different structures, different social structures of how we organize ourselves. And so what we desire is to be the human animal again. Again, whether it's again or not, I don't know. Just to be, that's, that's the, that for us is, a, is the normal way of being. And what we're looking at, I say we, us, you know, us liberal, free-thinking, rational people are not the norm, are, are an exception and we're only the exception because we're utilizing a side effect of, of our evolution. It just, it's you know, like you were saying before about reframing the argument. Instead of looking from a point of view of we're right, actually, there is a rightness about a populist, about a Trump supporter, because that's a sort of a fundamental what it is to be. We wouldn't think of I don't know, a group of chimpanzees who fought another group of chimpanzees and killed them, murdered them, um, as being wrong, we would think, oh, that's what chimpanzees do. But we think that 
Trump supporters are wrong because they are not acting in the way that we think is a rational way of acting. But maybe we're the, the, the outliers. Yes, I would certainly go along with that. I, I think that's a possibility that needs to be at least acknowledged. So shall we just move to different parts of the globe? <laughs> uh, well, there is, you know that uh, you, you did have a... I need a new uh, planet. <laughs> there's a... In the evolution of, of chimpanzee, you, know, you had this, 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 this split between... between uh, um, who, who is it? Pan troglodyte and, and pan pan pantheus, I think it is. Uh, you know, the bonobos basically, you know, drifted off uh, genetically from from the chimpanzee, or you know, they're both chimpanzees, of course. But but I mean, th there was some genetic drift for for, for whatever reasons, um, and you know, basically temperamentally turning out to be very very different species, even though they are genetically, you might as well say identical. Um, so, you know, this can happen in all populations, including humans. You know, we are, evolution hasn't stopped just because we say so. Uh, you know, it, it has brought us to this point with, with a whole lot of different variation, um, you know, and none of us could say, oh, this one is right. You know, evolution decides that. Uh, but, you know, in terms of uh, human cultural evolution, I think, you know, we, we, we can, in fact, you know, influence the direction of that. You know, our biological evolution will, you know, we maybe in future we'll be, you know, tinkering with genes and stuff. But, but you know, essentially what really drives humanity is, is, is its cultural evolution. Uh, that, that is the that seems to be the uh, you know it, it is it is those things that that people seem to be more focused on than than their biology. How much does power have to do with it? So so if you talk about groups, group identity, yes, but there seems to be a, an um, an element of power in it. Like, isn't it striking if you think um, that the, um, and still now, so the, the uh, offspring of former slaves um, or, and, and the slaves themselves uh, all adopted Christianity as their religion, fervently pursued, the religion of their slave masters, you know, isn't it? totally mad, you know, if you look at it, that the, the enslaved people should adopt the religion of the slave masters and do so forevermore, you know, and, and uh, wouldn't look back and say, hang on a minute. Um, you know, that, that didn't really work for us, did it? Uh, so there, is, there must be, there is that attraction to be to override your real clear self-interests, uh, to be part of something bigger that gives you identity, you believer, you follow the Christ, uh, and but it is the, uh, the the power of that group. They they are clearly in power, and that oh that uh, there is an attraction that overrides your own moral compass, surely, because you, you shouldn't be saying, are they quite right to enslave me because I'm just of a lesser kind? And that doesn't usually go like that, but still they are ready to do that. And still nowadays don't question that whatsoever, most of them. So the, the, is, it, is it that this group that you want to find identity in has to be powerful. Is it that Trump in power is so very attractive? Well, one of the, I don't know much about evangelicals, but white 
it is, this is Wikipedia, and it says, but white evangelicals are almost exclusively Republicans. Black evangelicals are almost exclusively Democrats. So I'm not sure that, well, it, it, from that, if that's right, that it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not a relationship between this political belonging and the religious belonging. They're, they're, they're two different things. Um, if if that's correct, but why? And I, I guess there'd be a, a the reason you would have the adoption of Christianity is because, like Gary was saying, it's a sort of it's a it's a it's a cultural evolution. It's because that becomes the norm. That sort of Christianity becomes the norm, and and you absorb it as a because there's no I don't know maybe there's no there's no alternative to it I don't know enough about American history to um, to be definitive but it sort of seems that that would be that's, you know that Christianity is it's a Christian country and, you know it's got lots of churches and, and so you just become a Christian and you can then become an evangelical Christian but your political affiliation is closer to the sort of a left wing than than right wing hmm. but but, but, but I, I don't that, i don't know i mean I'm, I'm i'm guessing that that happens in groups in general um you know whenever you enter a group you sort of have to feel your way into it and sort of find out you know where you fit into it if at all um when i was um oh, 16 or something uh, I went to the to the northwest of Western Australia, which is a, which is in a remote state, and this place was really, really, really remote, uh, a desert, uh, and there's basically iron ore um, mining going on, lots of um, migrants, lots of uh, Australians, of course, and uh, I was there as a trade assistant, and I was probably one of the most useless trade assistants that you could ever imagine. I'll, I'll well, what's a trades to. assistant? <laughs> what well, do you he, do? <laughs> I, I sort of go, go get things for, for the welders and, and, the, the, uh. and uh, you know, yeah, lots of uh, uh, steel fabrication and, and, and things like that. Uh, my dad was actually a welder, so it's not as if uh, I was unfamiliar with you know, a welding environment and, and steel work and all that. Uh, but, but anyway, that's not the story. <laughs> the story is groups. Uh, and, and, you know, it was very, very male society. You know, th th these were, you know, really rough, wild west towns. Um, and all, all people did was drink and work. That was life. Um, and the, the, the basic racism there was just endemic. And, you know, I mean, I, I didn't, at that stage, I didn't really know much about racism. It just wasn't a thing for me. Uh, but all of a sudden, you were almost expected, well, you were expected to be racist. You were assumed to be racist, racist in, in how we understand it. Uh, it who were they racist thing. against? I mean, who, who was the Aboriginals, well, immigrants? Aboriginal, Ab Aboriginals were, were first on the list. Uh, although a, a few of them got free passes, um, but they actually weren't Aboriginal. They were Thursday Islanders, so they, they sort of got a free pass despite being technically Aboriginal. Uh, so there, yeah, there was, I guess, a hierarchy of hatred. Or, or, uh, and uh, of course, you know, <laughs> up there about halfway were the Toms. So, you know, you didn't get away with it either. <laughs> So it was just sort of such an entrenched thing. You just couldn't not be racist. It was just incomprehensible in that sort of environment. And we're not talking about, you know, highly intellectual environments here. This is really, you know, certainly at that time, I could safely say that they were, you know, very, very poorly educated uh, uh, men um, who were do doing a pretty good living, actually, at that time. Uh, making up an awful lot of money. So, so you know, th this is, I guess, the raw material that 
that you work with, you know, when, when you, and especially when you sort of enter into groups, it's extremely difficult, you know, despite whatever you do, to not get pulled in to that understanding or, 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 or to that uh, perception of that there's, there's us and there's them. Even if you don't want to be an us, the very fact that most people believe you are an us and, and, and the thems believe you, believe you are an us basically forces you into the us. And that, it's interesting that you say that so it was in a, a rural environment, an isolated environment where there, are, there aren't alternatives. There isn't the complexity. You have only this yeah. as your option. And that's the thing I was thinking about, you know, cities and, and being in a rural environment. In a city, you, you can't be like that. You can't, it's, well, it's much more difficult to identify with a single group because it just doesn't exist in, in geographically, in, in sort of in one place. It's, it's a much more difficult thing to organize because you are constantly being confronted by complexity, by other groups. And you, so that comes back to this this idea of complexity, doesn't it? That if you have a much more, and if you look at the map, there was a very interesting map on one of the websites. I spent far too much time looking on news websites and things over this election, but there was one quite interesting one which showed the blue and red in terms of the um, the population of America. So instead of having those big red blocks and the big blue blocks, what you get was the amount of people, the graphic which represented the amount of people. And there are tiny dots of red all over the place with big gaps in between and really intense blocks of blue in the cities, which clearly relate to where, where the cities are. So you get this idea, this big spread of, of small density conservative positions and then when you've got lots of people all together it goes blue but you spread people out and they and maybe that's it maybe that's just it is that maybe you that when, is it. Yeah. when you get all lots of people together you you have to be in a complex environment and you spread everybody that wouldn't explain japan i mean Mandarin, just, but just, but I don't know, it's, maybe it's just a small country. I don't know. It's, uh... Well, I think the only difference in Japan is that they have a, a unitary culture. I mean, they, they have the same in other countries. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm sure a lot of countries in Europe, Europe would have this sort of you know, general culture of, you know, of, you know there is a, an us um, as a, you know, a sort of a, a a, a positive group mem membership. Um, yeah, it's just when it turns toxic, it can be rather nasty. So it's it's actually whenever I, I it feels to me that I go into a, so can we find the intellectual reasons for it, and then I I see that that is kind of limited, and what it points to is uh, an experience actually much more uh, um, powerful. So you are in your environment and that will be how it is, just like Gary explained, this is how this mining town works. This is how people think. And it gets very, very uh, difficult to be different because that is just how it is. Uh, the slave arrives into this Christianity and that's how it is. And there is very limited uh, possibility of going against that because that is just how it is. And so it is this, this Heideggerian understanding of what makes us, you know, what is our world, what is implicit in it rather than explicit and re respond to the implicit cues how people talk, what people believe, uh, what are their practices. They go to church, they worship. That's what one does. So it is what he calls the one. 
So what one does, how one talks, is uh, is is a, a, a creation of the group. It is very difficult to extricate yourself in it. And if you live in Birmingham, then it um, suggests to you that you are open to other cultures because this is how it is there. You have to get along. You meet other people who also call themselves Britons and you, you just, that is how it is. Um, and if you um, uh, live in in a, in, a, in a little town in 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 Cheshire, then that's not they they all whites and everything else is not British and so it it is just our experience what populates our world and uh, what one does in it through practices much more doing than thinking thinking is a luxury. How does that fit with your evangelical friends, the the highly intellectual evangelical? Why are they like that? Do they live in complex societies or do they live in rural communities? Interesting question. Um, there, there is a tendency to only socialize with other evangelicals. So they meet lots of other people in their um, working life, but in their private life, they populate. So they, there's the segregation going on. You know, it's not there, there's no socializing going on with the devil worshippers. For sure so um that must extend beyond then just the social groups just the, the just the um, meetings with other people i mean things like media t television newspapers um, internet there's, there's so much that is available when it, which has diversity so presumably in order to maintain your position, you have to restrict what it is that you're. And, and that's that's a sort of anti-intellectual position, isn't it? It's sort of, is it? You know, to to say, well, I'm only going to expose myself to those things which support my position. So maybe it's well, not... isn't that everyone that does Facebook and you know just get, gets into those silos and bubbles and all that? You know? Well, it... maybe I don't know. I was just thinking that it's yeah, maybe, maybe. I mean, I I've as I say, far too much time spent looking up at news news sites. Well, it's cool. You bring and, it back to us. <laughs> and, and my news. One of my my things is to have. I've got the Washington Post and the New York Times and and Fox News on my list. And I always, every day when I've looked down what's happening, I'd always click on Fox News, see what Fox News is saying. Because, but there's a sort of reluctance to press the button on Fox News. You think, I'd, because I know what's there and I really don't want to listen to this. I don't want to read it. I don't want to hear and and i have i haven't been able to go on to the the um opinion pieces on fox because fox news seems to have two different things there's one which is the news reporting which is sort of, i mean it's a it's a sort of daily telegraph maybe daily mail but they also have these opinion things which is where the most people watch and they're the sort of late night programs or evening programs and they're um, somebody Tucker, I think, and, and whatever, I, I can't remember their names, but those are the ones where they are really opinionated. They're the ones who are really the Trump supporters, and they're the ones that get the mass viewing. And I can't watch that. I can't sort of just click on it. I can't. It's, and and the, so I'm sort of thinking, that's interesting. I'll go, I can look on, I've sort of steeled myself to Fox News, but I can't look at those I and I, I and so I am restricting myself because I sort of know what it's going to say and I know that I'm going to be cross 
and I, but I suppose I also there's a sense of I don't want to waste my time. Um, but also, I think it's a sort of my restricting myself to the complexities if I'm not prepared to go there and listen to it, listen to those arguments. But actually, no, I'm, I don't think they're arguments. I'm not quite sure what they are, though. And I'm not quite sure what the rationale behind it is, other than viewing figures. Maybe there's nothing other than viewing figures, but it's a, it's difficult. I would have thought it'd be quite difficult for the presumably the people who run these shows are quite clever. Now, obviously, they're clever, and yet they are sort of deliberately misleading. But but do they think they're delib deliberately misleading, or do they think they're doing it right? It's it's quite difficult. It's a it's sort of they're not the ones in power. They're not the Trump. They're not the ones who are gaining the political benefit from it. But they're obviously gaining something from it. Maybe it's just the glorification of the celebrity status that they have. But in order to keep that celebrity status, they're having to say things and encourage people to do things, to support them, to listen to them. But do they really believe what it is that they're saying and if they don't that's a, that's a sort of an interesting position to take i heard this um um sociologist saying uh, most economists when they come out of economist school um are left-wing and then they hit the job market and there is very little job offering going on as an economist on the left wing side because the think tanks are they have to be sponsored by someone and rich people do not sponsor left leaning economist think tanks <laughs> they want think tanks which is another word for lobby group uh, you know think tank sounds so amazing it's a lobby group and so they sponsor a lobby group that uh, benefits them and rich people like to hang on to their richness. So they are right wing. They, they favor the rich. The jobs for economists uh, are in right wing think tanks. So by sheer, they need to make a living. So they join those think tanks because that's where the jobs are. After a couple of years, they are right wing thinking they are they don't lie they don't say oh well i just say that in my job because i keep my job uh actually what i think is that no their world has changed it got populated with different things with all these right-leaning people they learn from people around them they get the positive feedback from when they say the right-wing things and 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 uh, they get then praised for those things and within a few years there you have a full fully formed right-wing economist That's that was that's just that's really interesting because it's very similar then to Gary's welders. You go into that community from outside, mm -hmm. and within a couple of years, you take on their views. You you have the racist views of the welding community because and you, it's not known to you that you have been turned. Yeah, it's not known. You think that's how it is. So it is a group thing. Then it is you belong to this group. You, you. Mm -hmm. That's rather shocking and very <laughs> negative. Oh my lord! Is there hope? <laughs> well, it, yes, because I think the more you, the more is understood, the more hope there is, isn't there? So. Well, that, that's not only the case if, if the group has consciousness of of that. You know, that that uh, they have consciousness of their exclusivity or their inclusivity or consciousness of, of uh, the effects that their, their actions have on, on other groups. And, you know, groups rarely sort of think about the con you know, consequences of that you know, particular group. 
you know, it, it's just belonging is all that really matters, I guess. Um, but if, if you wanted to change things, then, because one of the things I thought was that what Biden, he seems like a really sort of nice chap. He's like a sort of like a, a very um, moderate and uh, quite thoughtful person. And I just wondered what, that it would be interesting if he's if he just sort of decided. Well, actually, what I'm going to do now is I'm, yeah, I'm going to be the president, but I'm going to go and be with the the Trump voters, the evangelicals. I'm going to go and sit with them. I'm just going to be there with them and listen and talk and hopefully not be turned, but but to sort of present a different perspective because it would it's sort of difficult to hate somebody who is moderate and i know he was trump was trying to present him as somebody who was stupid and uh, demented and heavily influenced by left-wing radicals but if he just sort of sat there and he because he does seem to be actually quite bright and he's and but very moderate and very thoughtful. He could sort of just maybe just sit, absorb, and say, "Well, well, yeah, but there are other ways of 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 being," and and it just by being with other people, by being with the people who dislike, apparently dislike him, you then introduce a bit of that complexity. You, you, people then have to sort of start think, "Well, yeah, he's a Christian. I mean, he's a he's a Catholic. He's not a." evangelical American, which are all Protestants apparently, but he, you know, he believes in the Bible and he, and, and he believes a lot of things that we believe. And yet he's, and, and he's a president and yet he, he has different views and yet he's very inclusive. He's, he's, that's certainly what, what he's saying. So it just sort of it seemed that there maybe there's a possibility of breaking down that polarization And maybe that's something that is a way forward in in politics is is introducing complexity into the situation. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I just it just sort of occurred. I mean, the, uh, the, the, I got an American friend who said very much the same thing. He's hoping for that. He's hoping that Biden go, really goes on a tour of yeah. the mid mid countries. Yeah. Uh, and and shows himself listening to these people who are so lured in by 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 a trump so that they because they um, that they feel that they they got lured in by trump because they felt not listened to and so he thinks that might be something that could turn that around it depends, doesn't it? If you get just little mini Trumps that just shout <laughs> abuse at you, then uh, I don't know. And but most people, hopefully, are not like that. <laughs> you know, they just—I don't know what they like. <laughs> uh. No, it's it. But th th that would be interesting as well to to be in a situation where you did have an abusive person, because then the rest of the people would think, well, actually, am I? Am I associating with somebody who's being abusive? Mm. Because yeah. that that that's not certainly not you know it's not a Christian. <laughs> it's not a Christian. Well, it shouldn't be presumably be a Christian trait. I don't. It's so. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's it's, it's but it's very interesting. I, I and I, and I I think it's as always very interesting listening to you to you in the sense of this. The different, putting different perspectives on things, seeing things um, from a, a different point of view. But I'm so glad it's over. Actually, I'm, I'm glad that. Ah, <laughs> oh, but is it? Is it over? <laughs> Don't say that. Yeah. Yes, it's over. Yeah. I th I think the show is just beginning. Oh, well, I'm with you. 
<laughs> Look at that. He has always surprised us. He's surprising us as we speak. Huh? He has not conceded. He's not done. He's firing people. He's hiring people. That's not... What? Is that a, gonna is, go on? Is that an, it might not be fusion? president, but he will be very much there. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not <laughs> sure I, I, because I don't know enough about how the American politics works. And because in you know in Britain, you if you're a leader of the Conservative Party in opposition, then you have a role. But America doesn't seem to work like that. You don't seem to be the leader of your party until you are you win one of these. Um, I don't know what they call them. Primaries, yeah. Primaries, yeah. So, yeah. I it doesn't seem to be a role that you can be president, but and you you're a Republican or a Democrat, but you you're not the leader of your party who be the, then becomes the president. It's no, it's a sort of a different true. way of doing. It. So it's I'm not sure what way. I'm not sure what his his role will be. I think that be the monarch of Twitter, but Twitter has turned against him. So I guess <laughs> yeah. he qualifies his tweets all the time. <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I, I googled that guy, Twitter guy, you know, because it's so different from Facebook guy, uh, isn't it? So what, uh, Gary? What do you think about Twitter guy? You know, <laughs> that, that was because he has a strange name. Oh, no, because. Um, that is that is a real political stance to suddenly write to this uh, tweet is unsubstantiated or whatever you know that is wow it's a political stance it's what should have been done from the very very beginning uh, yes <laughs> <laughs> i take it whenever it comes i tell you mm -hmm. <laughs> yes yeah well i think the, uh, i get so uh, the early argument for the not not moderating his tweets was that he, because he was the president and therefore his views should be seen by everybody whereas if it was not the president they would have been moderated but be he had exemption because of his because because it was a political statement I don't. I'm not sure. He's just Trump just fired the guy, and nominated a new one for now for the for the Congress to um, to confirm uh, who had the oversight over the media. Did you notice that? Mm -hmm. That just happened three days ago or so. So he he fired the guy under whose watch. Twitter guy turned on Trump. And so that must be how that fits together. And now he, he nominated someone who is obviously a total follower of Trump to be the head of this govern, government body that overlooks media. So he let him down, the first guy. You know, he didn't have enough enough uh, thumb screws on Twitter guy. <laughs> He's so well, furious think... about that, I'm sure. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. He thinks that that might have lost him the election. I, I, I could imagine that he thinks something like that. Mm -hmm. it, that is just real, the establishment fighting back and how dare they. I must leave you because I got okay. someone else to, well, to me. Later then. Oh, okay. right. <laughs> <Bye>. <laughs> yeah.